We are moving on in our study of decimal place value. This is lesson three. Today we are looking at expanded form and the comparing and ordering of decimal numbers. Specifically, here are the questions we're answering today. How is expanded form for decimals like expanded form for whole numbers? And how can I compare decimal numbers? We're going to order some numbers today too, but since that's just bigger comparing, I left it to two questions. So last week we worked with expanded form, and the expanded form of 1,425 is 1,000 plus 400 plus 20 plus 5. And we call it expanded form because the value of each digit is shown. You remember that. We've got that under control. Well, expanded form with decimals works exactly the same way. I'm going to expand it and show the value of each digit. So if I've got 63 hundredths, 63 hundredths has 6 tenths and 3 hundredths. If I were to picture it as money, I would have 6 dimes and 3 pennies. If you look down one, you're going to see a number that has both a whole number and a decimal. And the way I write the expanded form has to reflect that. So 2 and 48 hundredths has 2, the whole number, plus 4 tenths plus eight hundredths. And if we were to go a digit bigger, then we would have 16 and five hundredths. And you'll see that 16 has 10 plus six. There are no tenths, so we're going to skip that and we're going to write in plus five hundredths. Right now, I'd like you to pause the video, choose two of these examples to write into your notebook so you've got an example when we start our work tomorrow. How are decimal numbers compared? Good news. The way we compare decimal numbers is exactly the same way we compare whole numbers. We look at the first digit and then move to the right each digit to see which one's greater than the other. So right here, I've got three tenths, and right here, I've got five tenths. And five tenths is bigger than three tenths. Would you rather have 57 cents or 38 cents? That's not hard. We know that 5 tenths is greater than 3 tenths. Remember, alligator bites the largest number. And 57 hundredths is greater than 38 hundredths. Now let's come down and take a look here. There is no whole number. We're dealing with 46 hundredths and 42 hundredths. Here is 4 tenths. And we got 4 tenths again here. Great. That doesn't help. So again, we're going to move one digit right. Here I have six hundredths, and here I have two hundredths. Six is greater than two. Alligator bites the biggest thing. And you can ask yourself, would I rather have 46 cents or 42 cents? It's not much of a difference, but 46 is more than 42. The three problems you're looking at often have stumbling blocks. These are problems that can be a little tricky. So let's take a look at the first one. Here we have 3 tenths, and here we have 3 tenths. Let's go back a digit. Here's a zero. Um, here's nothing. Remember what I told you yesterday, that if you add a zero to the back of a decimal number, it doesn't change its value? Ah, and now you can see that they're actually equal. What often happens with kids is that they will look at 0 .30 and 0 .3 and think that 0 .30 is bigger simply because it has more numbers. Remember, 3 tenths and 30 hundredths are the same thing. 3 dimes and 30 pennies are the same thing. And if I'm ever in doubt, I can add a zero to the back of a decimal so that they're the same length and compare from there, which wouldn't be a bad idea in our second. Like I said, kids often let's say and go, oh, this one has two numbers and this one only has one. Well, in whole numbers, that works. In decimals, not so much. Don't make that assumption. Here we have four tenths and here I have one tenth. Four tenths is bigger than one tenth. Would you rather have 40 cents or 19 cents? And if you really want to be sure, we can drop a zero behind that. Oh yeah, 40 is bigger than 19. A third problem people sometimes run into is that they get so wrapped up in looking at the decimal numbers, they forget to look at the whole number. 
here we've got two tenths and here we've got six tenths but that doesn't really matter look at your whole number there's five and there's three if your whole number is bigger then it doesn't really matter what your decimal is five is bigger than three would you rather have five dollars and twenty seven cents or three dollars and sixty eight cents that's kind of a no-brainer so once I'm able to compare decimals I can put them in order place the numbers in the order from least to greatest and again you've got to pay attention to how they're asking for it this time they want least to greatest I'm going from small to large that's really important so let's take a look at our numbers here I see a decimal in two places, a decimal in two places, decimal one place. Ah, here's a whole number and then a decimal in one place. This is the only number with a whole number attached to it. It's going to be the greatest one. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. All right, we've got U under control. Now let's go take a look at our decimal numbers. We're going to look at the first place behind the decimal, three, zero, four. Well, which of those three numbers, three, zero, and four, is smallest? Well, yeah, decimal zero, hard to get any smaller than that. So we've got decimal zero, three. And now, which is the next largest, point three or point four? Don't worry about the fact that there's this eight here. It doesn't matter right now. Three tenths is smaller than four tenths, no matter what I have behind it. And then there's our decimal four. Make sure the alligators are biting the big ones. And there we go. Three hundredths is smaller than thirty-eight hundredths, is smaller than four tenths, is smaller than one and one tenth. So today we talked about how expanded form for decimals is just like expanded form for whole numbers, that you show the value of each of the digits there. And we also talked about how decimal numbers are compared. Again, it's basically the same thing as comparing whole numbers. You just have to decimal in there. So that leaves us done pretty quickly. Take some time. Go help your mother with something, and then have a good afternoon.